So, may I ask, can you describe your character for us? Sure, I play Shirin. She's a doctor. She's making uh, cyborgs. And she is uh, a little bit of a villain at the beginning of the movie uh, who has a change of heart. A stylish villain, I have to say. Very stylish. Uh, anything we all left to the screening saying how we wanted all of her outfits. Yeah, she was very, how she presented herself uh, was very important to her. I think that she was really making a statement when, you know, when she walked through space, she was really announcing, you know, what she was and what she wasn't. And she was very much saying, I am not of this place. I have better places to go. <laughs> it was kind of her position at the beginning of the film. That was great. And I think she said it with her, her dresses. She did. She said it with many things. And her gloves. Yeah. Uh, may I ask, how was working with Robert Rodriguez? How was that? It was really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, he was so excited to be making the film. Um, and uh, yeah, I know it's something that he dreamed of doing for many years. And uh, he brought such passion to it. And a really nice way of working. You know, he had this whole, he has a studio in his hometown. And he built this whole city at his studio. And it's really like a family environment. Um, so it was really nice, nice working with him. Speaking of the studio, uh, Iron City, what a set. Uh, you're actually sitting in Passport to Iron City, mm -hmm. which is a replica of the set, as you can tell. And it's supposed to be an immersive experience for fans. Um, what was your favorite part of Iron City? Did you uh, feel like you stepped foot in it? I guess the, um, the scope of it was really extraordinary. It was, it was really large. I mean, they built a network of streets, uh, and they were very fully realized. You could go inside doorways, and there were whole s interior sets as well, um, which is pretty magical. You know that you can kind of walk around this this town and walk through a doorway, and it's oftentimes on a set like it's just the facade and there's nothing inside or behind it so that was pretty magical yeah it was huge I I saw it back last March and it's amazing what they did and what they created and mm -hmm. it's still there um, so for uh, when filming it was it hard because you know the other characters some of them they were in motion capture suits so you didn't necessarily know what they looked like for example for Rosie you didn't know what her character would necessarily look like mm -hmm. was that a challenge at all in making the film not so much because she was there and um, so I just went with you know what she was doing and so for that time when we were working together she was Alita um, just the performance that she was giving uh, and she was great to work with and she thought I thought she did a great job um, and then the rest of the time I was either with Christoph who's a fantastic actor or Mahershala who's also very talented so Yes. Yeah, so speaking of which, how was uh, working with both Christoph and Mahershala? Um... It was great. They were lo they're both lovely people. Um, I had a really nice time working with both of them. Uh, both great actors. It was a privilege to work with them both. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hey there. Here's today's daily fact. That slightly scandalous charcoal drawing of a topless Kate Winslet in Titanic was drawn by none other than the director himself, James Cameron. Now, if you want something done right, sometimes you just need to do it yourself. Now, remember to click here below to subscribe for more content or on the side to watch another video.